Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be making this canvas zipper pouch with a wrist strap. We're going to be revisiting the paint drop cloth that we purchased for the other projects. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll link them in the description below this video. These are a great scrap buster as well and they're great to have on hand for all kinds of occasions. They make the perfect little gift or just the perfect little bag that you could have for any occasion. Also with this canvas blank outside, I think these are perfect for using your easy press and iron on to add some personalization to the outside of these bags. I am going to cut this out by hand in the video, but if you are a Cricut user, I have linked a Cricut Design Space file in the description below the video, and you can grab that and cut this out with your Cricut. For the rest of you, let's get started cutting our fabric. We're going to need two pieces of fabric for our outer and two pieces of fabric for our lining. Those are both cut to nine by seven. We're going to need a zipper that is at least nine inches long. For our handle, it's going to be 11 by two. Zipper tabs are going to be two by two. You're going to need two of those. The D-ring strip is one and a half by two, the lobster clasp and a D-ring. I'll pause the video here so that you can take a screenshot of all the measurements. So the first thing we need to do is prepare our canvas fabric if you're using the drop cloth. If you're not using a drop cloth and you're just using a cotton fabric, you can skip this step. But if you have any raw edges that are fraying and if you use this inexpensive drop cloth, it probably is. You just want to zigzag around the edges. I use my serger. If you have a serger, that's great. But you just need to either do a zigzag stitch or serge around those edges just to keep them from fraying. So once you have your outer fabric prepared, we're going to prepare the zipper. And what I like to do is just unzip the zipper a little bit and then right beneath that zipper stop, I'm just going to put a stitch back and forth right over that zipper just to keep the zipper tails together while I'm working. Now we need to trim off the zipper stop and we're going to cut that just between the stitch that we just made and that zipper stop. So it looks something like this. Now we're going to add one of our zipper tabs. This is a two by two piece of fabric. I have folded it in half and then folded the centers to the middle just like this and then folded it in half again. You guys have done this a thousand times in many of the videos. You're just going to position that right over the edge of your zipper, take it over to your sewing machine and stitch right across that edge. I actually run two rows of stitching, but that's totally up to you. I just like to be extra sure it's going to stay in place. All right. So now we're going to, I'm using the grid on my mat and we want to cut the zipper one inch shorter than our outer fabric or any of the fabrics, but you want to cut the zipper one inch shorter. So if you're using a different measurement for your pouch, just make sure you cut that zipper one inch shorter. So you can see here, I've got the grid and the ruler lined up one inches over or one inch over from the edge. And I've cut that zipper off on the opposite end. Make sure your zipper pull is up there on the other side before you cut that off. So you don't cut the zipper pull off. And now we're going to use that other zipper tab and place that right over the edge. It's folded the same way. And you're just going to take that over to the sewing machine and duplicate what you did on the other end. Just stitch that down in place. Once you have those stitched into place, we're just going to trim them off. I'm just using the ruler just to keep it straight. It doesn't have to be precise, but you just want to trim off those edges just to keep everything a little more tidy and you don't have to use a ruler. Okay. So once we have the zipper nice and trimmed, it should be looking something like this. Now we're going to apply or begin to install the zipper on the outer fabrics. So you're going to take one of your outer fabrics and if you're using a printed fabric, you want the pretty side up and you're going to put the zipper zipper pull side down. So you're going to flip it over. If you're using the drop 
cloth like I am in this video, there's not a right and a wrong side. But if you're using a right and a wrong side fabric, you want the right side up and the zipper pull facing the right side of the fabric. And you can see I have a little bit of extra fabric on each end. There should be about a half an inch and that's exactly what we want. So we're just going to take that over to the sewing machine and stitch that down. Should be looking something like this. And my zipper's not really wonky, that's just the way it's laying there. So you have that extra fabric on each end and your zipper is stitched down, right side down to the right side of your outer fabric. Now you're gonna take one of your lining fabrics, make sure you, if it's a directional fabric like mine is, you have the top of it facing the zipper side. And you're gonna put pretty side down on top of that sandwich. And you're going to turn it over, take it over to the sewing machine, and just follow that stitch that you just made and stitch it down. And I stitch it from edge to edge. You don't stop at the zipper. Go all the way to the edge of your fabrics. So it should be looking like this. So if you open it up, you've now got that zipper sandwiched in between your outer and your lining fabric. Now we're going to repeat the same process to install the other side. So we're going to take our little sandwich here. We're looking at the lining fabric right now. We're going to take our other outer fabric and we're going to place it zipper pull side down. So you're looking at your lining right on top of that fabric. If you feel more comfortable, you can take it over to your machine stitch that side down. Make sure your zipper pull is facing the outer fabrics facing down and you can stitch that down. Now if you're feeling a little more confident with your zippers you can go ahead and add the lining fabric and sew these both at the same time. I'm starting to do that a little more often but for the longest time I just sewed one side at a time. So if you want go ahead and sew this down and then come back and add your lining on top of your lining fabric or you can sew this whole sandwich at once. So again you've got your outer fabric on the bottom, your zipper sandwich right here and then you would add your lining face down. Once you have that sewn you should have something that looks like this. So you want to spread those fabrics out make sure they're pushed away from the zipper. It would be beneficial to take it over to the iron at this point and iron everything out. Once you have that done, you're going to top stitch right down each side of the zipper as close to the zipper as you like. Here's mine finished. You can see I've top stitched both sides down. So now you're going to take your little D-ring tab and again it's folded in half, folded into the center, then folded in half and you're just going to stitch that closed along that open end. You can do two or just one. I just did one since it's so little but you can do whatever you like. You're going to slip your D-ring right over that fabric or slip the fabric into the D-ring I guess and just fold it in half like this. Now you want to figure out where you want your zipper to open. I like my zipper to open on the left and pull to the right. If you like it the other way, that's up to you. But I like to put the tab on the same side as the zipper pull. So my zipper pull when it's closed is on the left side. So I'm going to put that on the left side. And you want to put it so that the tails are facing out, the D-ring is facing in, and you're just clipping that to the outer fabric only. And I don't do this ahead of time just in case things are wonky and we have to trim things up. I like to wait till this step. So go ahead and stitch that down lightly just right along that edge. Make sure you open up your zipper at this point. Very important, open up that zipper. Pull your outer fabrics up together to meet. Pick it up and let your lining fabrics meet. So it should be looking like this. So now we want to clip this together you guys have, I'm sure, can guess how it goes from here. We've done this a thousand times. But we're going to clip it together. I like to match the sides up first. Right where the zipper is. 
and I'm making sure that outer fabric is lined up. And then I'm going to do that same thing on the other side before I finish clipping the rest of it. So again, I push those fabrics, make sure everything is lining up. Clip those ends in first and then go ahead and clip everything else all the way around. Aren't I fast at this? All right, where I put the pins, we're going to, as you can imagine, we're going to leave that open. So we're going to start stitching with a back stitch. We're leaving it open. Go up and around, down, back over, and in at the pin with a back stitch. Try to do, when you go over the tab, you might want to back stitch. That's going to have a little bit more stress on it. Try to keep your seam allowance at a half inch or less because we left that half inch on the sides and that's going to give you the really nice zipper tabs. Here you can see I have sewn mine all the way around. We left the bottom open. We're going to trim off the corners. Be careful on the drop cloth corners. Um, you don't want it to start fraying. So if you don't have too much seam allowance there, I wouldn't mess with it. You just don't want that to fray. You can always go back and zigzag over that corner if you feel like you've um, made it a little bit more vulnerable. So now we're going to reach inside that hole because we left that zipper open. We can go all the way to the other end. And if you didn't leave the zipper open, just you can finagle it open. I've forgotten to do that before. But go ahead and turn everything right side out and then reach inside that hole and push those corners out. Make sure everything is nice and squared off. And I'm going a little bit faster in this video because we have done a zipper pouch before and I think you guys have probably got the hang of this, but I will link some other zipper pouches that are slower with more detail. When you're flipping this right side out, you want to flip those corners out. You should have a little tiny space between the end of the pouch and that zipper tab. And that's what gives you those really nice ends. I just think it looks much more professional. Now you just want to pull that lining together and those, that opening will, the seam allowance will naturally close in on itself. I like to take it over the iron, press it, and then give it a stitch closed. And then you just stuff it inside the bag. And then I always give it another press after I'm done. And basically you're done. Now, if you want to add the handle, see how nice those zipper tabs look. I just think it looks so much nicer than having that bunched up zipper on the end. So if you want to add the handle, again, we have taken our fabric and I used a shorter one than what I'm giving you uh, the length in. So I, gave you 11 by two, I would stick with that. I used about a nine inch and it's a little bit too small. So go with the 11 by two. If you want it to be thicker, you can cut it to 11 by three or four. It's just up to you how wide you want your handle to be. Um, but again, I have folded it in half, just like we do did for all the other parts. So you wanna fold it in half, fold the ends to the middle, Fold it in half again and make sure you press it. You're going to need those creases. You're going to thread your lobster clasp through. And then you're going to, this is different than we've done the handles before, but I like this much better. So then you're going to open that back up just on the end and open the other one back up and put them pretty sides together, just like this and take that over to the sewing machine and stitch that closed. Once you have that stitch closed just like this, you're going to open it up and I kind of just finger press those seams open and then go ahead and fold it right back up the way it was. And it will, it should do it if, as long as you pressed it and got your seams nice and pressed. Just fold it right back up the way it was. And then you're going to take it over to the sewing machine and stitch that closed. I find it easiest to take it to the sewing machine and lay it down. You're going to stitch right along that edge.
but if you just like put it down on the sewing machine and then pull it over and then just let the presser foot run and then as it runs you just keep rotating it until you make a full circle and you can again do one or two lines of stitching I did one on each side and then I like to put that seam where we join those together right by the lobster clasp take it over to the sewing machine and run a stitch right across there and that's it here is your finished zipper pouch I think these are super super cute and these are perfect to add personalization if you want to add a little iron-on on the outside I think some Ray Dunn fonts would be really cute or a name or all kinds of a different personalization these are great to have on hand and add you know as a gift wrap or a extra for a package or whatever you want to use it for but I hope you guys are enjoying these multiple uses for the painters drop cloth this is a super inexpensive series of videos and until next time never stop making see you guys bye bye